Hey everyone, welcome to the Above the Yellow Line live stream Wednesday night, going live across like, oh my God, like every platform uh, with my buddy Ben. ben Hello. Hi. Uh, I think you asked how I was doing. I'm okay. I'm very tired. It's okay. This, I don't know what the weather's like where you are, but here it's like, I mean, it's gross. It's been rainy. Not a fan. Uh, it's actually pretty nice that day. It was very cool this morning and they're giving more cold weather, but it's been, it's been good weather, honestly, here. So that's fair. That's fair. Cool. Very cozy, very early spring. It makes me want to just get through the winter already and be running around I mean, in shorts and sandals. Yeah, I'm ready for spring. The weather's been so back and forth. It's like it wants to, it doesn't want to, it's fine. Um, good to see you all popping in across TikTok, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, everywhere in between. Jackson, Hab, hello. Um, yeah, this show, um, it's kind of a chill chat. You know, we're going to talk, obviously, about NASCAR, maybe some IndyCar, maybe just a little bit, just a little, little bit. Um, obviously, we will recap Circuit of the Americas, the main talking points from that, NASCAR news. Anything you all want to talk about, leave them in the comments, and I'll make sure to set those talking points aside. And we can talk about them. And then, of course, previewing Richmond. There's a lot of Xfinity, I, I guess, like, hype this weekend. There's a lot of drivers, like, making their debuts or a lot of drivers that are kind of doing one-offs this weekend. So... Figured it was worth talking about as well. So, uh, Circuit of the Americas. Um, obviously, William Byron won. Pretty dominant win uh, from practice qualifying to the actual race itself. I think the last person to do that, according to Joseph Strigley from tobychristie.com, um, was Denny Hamlin back in 2019 at Bristol to sweep the weekend for the Cup Series. So, pretty cool there. Um, ben, what, what were your takeaways from CODA? Has it really been that long since someone dominated a weekend like that? According to Joseph. And I mean, we know to trust the stats. So yeah, I feel like, I feel like it's been, I feel like it, there's been one more recent for some reason, but I can't remember. I'd have to think like for some reason, my mind went to McDowell last year, uh, Indy road course, but I mean, I don't think he sat on pole for that. I can't remember off the top of my head. Uh, and I'm sure someone in the chat will tell me, uh, oh, okay. I thought Coda was fine. It's what I expect from this track at this point now. Uh, I personally, uh, I'm not the biggest, I love road course racing. I'm not the biggest fan of Coda. I like faster road courses like a Watkins Glen that the drivers are on top of the car and hustling it as compared to, uh, Coda, which is more of a slow technical track. And that's a personal preference. Um, that's fair. I think, uh, I think the biggest thing was just. Chevy is still there and Byron's still dominant at the end of all of this. Um, he's the first driver of the season to pick up two wins on the year. Uh, I, I think the, I think probably the biggest takeaway from my week, my weekend though, is uh, Connor Zilich is my God and I worship him freely. <laughs> <laughs> that man can drive and I love it. The fact that he was like all over the place. I mean, the, the, his season so far in general just has been mm. crazy. Like, Imza, anything that he's doing, I mean, he's winning, podiuming in, even if he doesn't get the results that he's wanting, like he's making a name for himself. Like that's insane. My man is 17 years old and owns a Rolex. And I don't think I've ever seen a real Rolex in my entire life. And I'm 26. So good for him. Yeah. Uh, but no, I think it was a fine weekend at Coda. Uh, it seems like it's, I think the last I've heard was that they're probably going to renew for next year. So good for them. Yeah. I think it's definitely a market NASCAR needs to be in um yes as i like that area whether you qualify also texas motor speedway or coda or both i think that's a cool market i think it's a market we need to be in at the end of the day i know tommy joe martin's made i think it was tommy joe martin's made some really good points um after i think it was the xfinity race on saturday talking about how important going to austin is and how it helps grow the brand in that uh area hi mrs kitchen yeah <laughs> it's judy um hi mama <laughs> hi mama kitchen um but i think uh i think it's an important market to go to so i don't suspect it's going to leave anytime soon um mm -hmm. also the xfinity race was the xfinity race on a road course which is the most xfinity race on a road course thing oh, yeah. ever it just is fine and then it turns into chaos and then someone wins the race and then it's over uh it's what i expect um oh yeah yeah it was it was a fine weekend it was it was a nascar road course weekend in modern nascar so yeah, I hate that SVG got docked like right after the race for track limits. And I was like, he could have finished like, what was it? Second, third or fourth, somewhere in there after the, mm -hmm. all that chaos unfolded. And then 
yeah. Track limits. Like that was insane. I do think, you know, going to Coda is such a good thing, right? Um, everyone said this is Byron's championship year. Some people in the comments, I see that. Um, and yeah, no, I mean, I think he's, it's shaping up to be a Byron year, but obviously we're only six races in at this point. So there's a lot of room to change. Um, I will talk about track limits real quick. So the senior vice president of competition, um, Elton Sawyer, talked about this. He said, quote, um, I would rather go to Daytona, Talladega, or Atlanta every day of the week from the officiating standpoint. Um, we're calling balls and strikes on every lap, and that's not really where we want to be. So kind of admitting they still have work to do um, in terms of how we are officiating track limits at road courses. I mean, this is ingrained into like IndyCar's DNA, Formula One's DNA, NASCAR. We're a little fast and loose with it. So yeah. It's something that we have to work on moving forward for sure, especially like Xfinity series and truck. It was over what 35, 37 penalties um, with those two yeah. series combined. And that's crazy. Obviously we didn't have as many in the cup series, but it was still a problem. Right. Yeah. I think, I feel like it's kind of a, a mixed bag. And my thing is we live, we live in a society. Um, no, we, <laughs> we do live in a society, but we live in this world where I feel like, strike and ball calls are just not a nascar normal it's uh, not and it shouldn't be like like if we're going to pull the metaphor of baseball into this because it's almost opening day for the phillies go phillies on friday yeah uh like it's common for like people and, I, and i'm a new baseball fan so i apologize but like it's th like that's literally what the game is is you're going to get a bad call against you probably one inning and it's going to go for you in the next like that's just how the sport goes sometimes and for us as a sport, we have that in some regards, and we've started seeing it more and more with um, pitch cycle issues, whether it be a strike and ball call on the um, automated system that's name I'm blanking on now. Thank you, Brain, for forgetting this. Or like restart violations. And right. It's all strike and ball calls and uh, so on and so forth. So I am happy that they admit that they need to do work. I feel like yeah. that's a big step one is always acknowledging that there is work to be done. I got everyone saying they're baseball teams. Yeah, everyone's apologize. saying we got go Eagles, go Mariners, uh, go Angels. We got the Braves. Uh, I can't. I'm sorry, Adam. I'm not a Braves guy, as you as most people can figure. Uh, but I'm happy they're acknowledging that there is room to grow, and I think that's a good part. Now, will they grow? I don't know because I feel like we've also lived in a world where they've talked about wanting to fix the situation. Of I just had it on tip my tongue and blanked on it. It also dealt with road courses. Crap. Um, local yellows. Yes. Oh, that is yes. It. Like the idea of local yellows. Like they've talked about that idea for a while too. And it feels like it's never been addressed or taken care of. Uh, so it's one of those, I won't hold my breath on. Cause it's also another mm -hmm. thing of, okay, we're going to go to however many more road courses left this year, like well, five. Yeah. And I was going to mention too, like, I mean, years ago when we were still, you know, it was like just Sonoma, like, and maybe Watkins Glen, it was just like two or three road courses a season, maybe one, whatever. Right. Now that we have like five, six, seven, whatever it is, you know, it, it, we need to start making more, or I guess more solid rules regarding the track limits, regarding, I don't know, pit stops, whatever you want to call it, whatever it is regarding the road courses because this is now a norm in nascar and we got to make sure yeah. we are officiating it as such because sometimes they would call a penalty like i noticed for the xfinity series race a lot of people were popping off on twitter about okay how did svg get called for this but larson didn't get called for that this makes no sense so mm -hmm. and obviously like you did mention ben they do have like an automated system mike joy did talk about it on the broadcast um on sunday where they have an automated system that feeds back to like the nascar tower or something like that and then they make calls of whether yeah. there's a penalty or not. So there's still a human element to it. Um, but yeah, so it's it's a tricky situation, but I do think NASCAR, it, since we are going to so many road, road courses, they need to make more defined rules. So mm -hmm. either define rules overall or define rules for certain tracks, because yes. you know, we, we have tracks like Coda, like Watkins Glen that have runoff area that people cut through and can use. That's awesome. But then we have tracks like Sonoma that it's all like dead grass, like for the most yeah. of it still. So it's like, okay, we can really quantify these at certain ones, but we can't quantify them at others. Like the Roval doesn't have a lot of cutoff because it's just a very tight track and spot overall. So yeah, um, I'm hopeful though. It, we may not see a change the rest of the year just because Coda is really the only place we see this issue at. And I'm okay with that. But like, next year if we're going back to Dakota, which it sounds like 
I would like to them by like the end of the year have like a thing of these are our rules. We yeah. follow these rules and be done with it. So yeah. And someone made a point on TikTok. Um last year they did kind of mess up a little bit with you know how they had no stage cautions and then in the playoffs they put them back again and my whole thing too is if we're going to make rules go a season with a different rule and then change it the next season unless like the tire penalties it was so egregious last year i believe that we have to change it like mid-season like because there were so many penalties there were so it's a lot of money involved we changed some things but when it's something like this if it has to do with stages again or whatever like Go a season, learn from your mistakes, and implement it another time. I mean, if it affects the playoff points and standings enough, like implementing and then taking away stages does for me, then yeah. Um, so yeah, cool. Um, I did want to mention our point standings. Track limits were, would also make a really sweet band name. I just want to say that. No, it totally would. We uh, above the yellow line lore here. We were going to start a podcast called Track Limits in 2022. Were we really? I think. I wasn't yeah. around that at that time. So Dom, I think it was 2022 or beginning of 2023, but I think it was 2022 and it was going to be a formula one podcast run by Dom. Wow. Yeah. And then we were going to do a trucks and Xfinity and we quickly realized that was way too much. So we wow. didn't so that's some lost media right there, man. Lost that's kind of I cool. still have the branding and logos and everything from it. And if I I'll have to send it to you lost media, man, that's so cool. I love lost media. It's so much. Um, but here are our point standings, by the way, um, in case you guys are curious about ours and we do Rigged. a whole bracket situation, not bracket situation, but point situation run by Adam. Um, I'm leading with 113 points. I picked William Rigged. Byron to win this weekend. So heck yeah. Sizable gap. Um, ben and Adam are tied, um, uh, my, uh, minus 19 to the lead. Um, and then there's a gap behind that with Brandon, Dom, Rob and Toby. Now Dom has made his picks every single weekend. However, He's been going off of his stats that he's pulled um, based on previous winners and things like that, which can give us a good tell of who's going to be in the top 10, maybe for each race. Um, but sometimes that doesn't always follow through. So yeah, but point situation. And then if you're curious, of course, the cup series point standings, William Byron is the first multi-winner of the season. I know this is a little small on your screen if you're on YouTube and Facebook. So feel free to zoom in on that. I need to fix that graphic there. Um, but William I'm Byron obviously sits on top of the playoff grid. Um, Denny Hamlin, Larson, Bell, Suarez. And then we have some mix-ups here. Um, there was somebody I did want to point out that was below the cutoff. Oh, Joey Logano, again, um, steadily rising below that cutoff line. So last week he was, I think he gained maybe seven, uh, not seven, sorry, like five spots below the cutoff line. And I might be wrong on that, but he is slowly starting to get those points back that he just lost because of his performance <laughs> earlier this season. So things to point out there. I do think it's interesting. John Hunter Nemechek is at this point, like in on points. He's what 15th in points right now, which is insane to me. Yeah. So he's been sneakily good for that team. Uh, like at Bristol, he like he was hovering around that like top five, top seven position, and I was like, he's been he's been a bit underrated. Eric Jones has struggled a little bit more for the Legacy Motorcycle Club guys, but um, <laughs> I think it's been I yeah. think he's had a little bit of an underrated year, and I'm I'm curious to see what he can do the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. And I will say with Noah Gregson, if he didn't have the penalty at the start of the season, he'd be doing pretty decently on points. Um, so I I still think well. He might be just under the cutoff line at that point. But yeah, it's interesting to see where everyone shakes out. Martin Truex Jr. is continuing to rise in points as well. Obviously, he's the first um, of the non-winners in the point standings right now. So pretty cool to see how it's all shaking out so far. And things are starting to solidify now that we're going to more of our normal tracks this season. So can I say really fast? Yeah. I would have not. I would have bet that Zane Smith would have been ahead of both Rick Ware racing cars by this time. That is I'm exactly shocked. what I was going to say. I am glad that you mentioned that. <laughs> Cause it's a shock on both ends. It's a shock that wow, Rick Ware, granted they got, uh, Haley got, uh, DNQ this week, but like Rick Ware has showed up and Zane Smith and that 71 team are out to lunch big time. Yeah. But then here's the thing too, even with like the disqualification from Justin Haley, and I will say Justin Haley, the RWR had a great performance at Bristol and they've actually kind of exceeded our expectations this year so far, but also because of their alliance with RFK, we kind of expected them to elevate things a little bit. Zane Smith is still last in points. Like that, that's kind of unacceptable to me for a full-time team, especially at Spire, where I think we're seeing them run a little bit better. Again, that kind of goes to, did Zane Smith move up too fast? Um, didn't, I don't know really barely any Xfinity series time, obviously truck series champion, 
but I don't know. You you question it. So I'm just hoping things get better for him and that team. But yeah. It just blows my mind. Like it shocks me truly. It's actually insane. Oh, hello. Actually cool. insane. <laughs> so mm-hmm. cool. All right. Well, uh, let's talk some NASCAR news. There was one story mm-hmm. that I didn't have on my list that somebody reminded me of in the TikTok chat. Uh, what I thought was cool. North Wilkesboro. Uh, they, <laughs> yeah. This, this is whole- some Dukes of Hazard stuff, man. I love it. They unearthed what they believe to be uh, an old moonshine cave under the grandstands at North Wilkesboro. Um, I'm trying to read through like if there's any plans of like what they're going to do with it. It's repairs are being made to fix the foundation and replace the grandstand seats before NASCAR's all-star race. But there's nothing that I'm seeing as to like what they're planning to do with that. Um, But I think they're still exploring. So I thought that was pretty crazy. That was pretty neat. So really cool. That's like just love that stuff. Like it's I, (laughs) my friend sent in our discord and I was like, I thought this was genuinely in like an onion style article for this news. I was like, there's no way. And then like, I saw that it was gaining traction everyone. I was like, Oh no, it it's real. Yeah. Um, Cause at first I thought it was fake too. And then I was like, Oh, all right, sure. And then I was like, Nope. Cause it's the most random. Like it's so over the top that it is just almost believable, but it's, it feels like it shouldn't be. Yeah. Like it feels like a Dukes of Hazard episode where like they hit a still in a house somewhere. Like it's so cool. Like I love that stuff. I'm all about it. Only North Wilkesboro though, right? I mean, Dude, that's so that NASCAR track. too. I gotta get out there at some point and see that track in person because I just think it'd be wild in general, let alone a moonshine still room being found somewhere on, on the premises. I might try to drive by at some point. We never know. do it. I mean, I th- it, I, obviously they've renovated it, but like the guy even before, because I know he passed away recently, but like the guy before, if you like, talk to him he'd like let you go out there and stuff and like hang around or whatever so or i think that's right i can't remember exactly so i'll make a trip maybe we'll see um other news by the way thunder barn too they do you know you've got to do the days of thunder barn as well oh okay see because it's out there they're well it's crazy because they keep talking about people taking pieces off of the barn and the barn's like going to be gone in like 20 years or something so oh okay all right well Thunder, not hunger. You do you you've seen Days of Thunder, right? Oh God, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Bad. I, I, I apologize, Bad. everyone. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh yes, I've seen Days of Thunder. Great movie. Um, it's shot beautifully as well. Like I love just the attention to detail and just the the cinema. It's beautiful. Okay. The cinema. That's the definition. That movie is the definition of cinema. Um. Anywho, though, we'll move on. Uh, talking about some NASCAR news here. There's not a whole lot that came out this week. I think it's all just talking about Coda and the product and everything in between. I think right now it's still an issue with, you know, the road course package that we have, uh, and there, I don't know how much we can try to figure out with that at this point. I think it is what it is, but, um, news wise spire at Sammy Smith to their truck series lineup in the number seven for a few races. Um, I think it's Martinsville. Yeah. North Wilkesboro, the Indy raceway park and the Milwaukee mile. So he'll get some time at spire. We know that seven truck is capable of winning. We've seen it with Kyle Busch. Mm -hmm. So you never know. Just, you know, another good good opportunity for Sammy Smith to. Yeah. Good for him. Good. Very good opportunity to get in some all-star equipment. Uh, with that program wins not only just with Kyle Busch, but Rajah won earlier this year yeah. um, at Vegas. Like, good for him. And it's a couple short tracks, too. So, and he's pretty good on short tracks. Like, I, oh, yeah. If I had to bet money on Sammy Smith's short tracks, I gladly would because he was killer in Arca. Like, I, it's a good opportunity for him. And it's his, it's his first starts in trucks, which I was like, wow, that's kind of wild. But didn't he almost win? I'm, I'm tr- hopefully, I'm thinking of him, but didn't he almost win the Martinsville race last year in the fall? He yeah, he was close to it. He, yeah. I mean, he won Phoenix in the spring of last right. year. So he's like a good short track kid. So yeah, yeah. kid. I don't know. He may be older than me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, Go figure this out he's now. definitely younger than you, I think, and probably younger than me for sure. Sorry, I'm off topic here. I apologize. No, you're good. We gotta look up ages. We, he's 19 got- years old. My back hurts God. so bad. <laughs> um, that's awful. He is 19 years old. Good for Sammy though. But yeah, no super cool opportunity. Um kind of an all-star deal also those that tmc scheme that scheme is so good so good uh, let me see if i can pull up the the paint schemes here if you guys haven't seen them hold on i might be able to send you the link pretty fast i know i tweeted it out on oh, yeah. twitter because they're so good like i i don't know what i don't know if he has what his link is to the pilot flying j brand oh uh, wow see look at you you got it 
but like it's so good it's such a good i don't even know what the middle i would never had heard of the middle sponsor i if anyone I... knows of it Gar garden harvest why does that sound familiar that sounds like, like an ag startup that's going to fail in 10 years golden harvest that's what it is that also it, still it sounds might. like an ag i mean we had one very similar named here in the city that failed so oh all right here we go let's here we go yeah these yeah good these schemes. if you're on youtube and facebook y'all can see this we're pulling up the schemes yeah the, the tmc they're just they're oh, so you actually good met sammy after the 400 that's cool that's neat so we got those good, good Pretty trucks cool. good good trucks yeah so sweet really so. cool opportunity for him though big taylor i know it, i can't yeah. it's because of how restream does it oh <laughs> i love it okay. now <laughs> anywho uh yeah so there's there's that news about sammy smith i think again is a great opportunity for him uh more news about um drivers getting other opportunities um nbm motorsports and the number 66 will, six will return for the 600 in north wilkesboro with timmy, timmy hill T timmy. timmy i love timmy man I'm excited so for him. Awesome. He's nice. Hey, I'm excited for him. I'm excited for Carl Long to get uh, hopefully back more at the track. I enjoy what they do. They do honest work and they're just here to have fun at the end of it all. So I'm very happy for him. Very happy for Timmy to get another chance at Cup. So yeah, he's a guy where I'm like, part of me wishes he would still run like full time Cup. I just know that's just not in the cards. So. It's just hard because MBM doesn't have that money right now. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. That sucks. That's okay. But no, excited to see him hopefully try to get into the all-star race with all-star open and 600. You never know. I'm there's going to be, I, I feel like a few one-offs in there. Jimmy Johnson's going to try to run it again. I think, right? Maybe. I think, yeah, Maybe. I think I so. Don't I don't remember, but should be a good time seeing him out on the track. And then last piece of news is about Ty Dillon. He secured five races in the number 16. I'm at colleague uh, cup series, um, Richmond, Texas, New Hampshire, and then Richmond again, in the fall and then Kansas. I feel nothing like <laughs> I, I say, what do you feel? <laughs> I, it, this is one of those deals that like colleague is already so down. And this is a whole yeah. thing I've thought about in recent months is like colleague was so high. Like they were at the top of their game in so many ways. Yeah. And they were like the top dogs in racing. And uh, then they just have fallen off completely. And I don't necessarily see how Ty Dillon's going to be. And I get it. That is supposed to be like the rotating driver car. I just don't see how Ty Dillon's going to add anything to this program right now. I don't. Um, and I don't think he will. And I mean, someone to commented on TikTok. Colleague is in the same team as just two years ago. I mean, they've gone through a lot of shifts. I think having AJ back in Xfinity is really going to help them and, and has helped them already. Poor Josh Williams has not had the season. I, I think any of us thought he would. Um, but congrats uh, to him. He's had really bad luck. Yeah. He, yeah. Congrats to him having a kid, but like he's had yeah. really bad luck. Really good luck though. Uh, so that's and then SVG's actually done incredibly well, in my opinion. Like mm -hmm. he's done great. But yeah, just call it as a whole in cup, though. They've kind of lost their way a little bit. It's just unfortunate. But yeah, I don't see Ty Dillon really bringing anything. I think it's just for him. He got sponsorship. Where's a free yeah. ride? Chevy ties. Colic. And then you see, we talked about this last week, too, when we talked about Matt Benedetto and his new ride. But Matt leaves teams a lot better off, whether you like him or not, than when they originally start. And we're seeing that. Ty Dillon, who used to be, I mean, pretty decent in trucks earlier in his career. I mean, he's just not doing anything with that 25 Rackley War truck at all, mm -hmm. which is, again, unfortunate because we saw what Matt Benedetto was able to do. He, he got a win. I mean, a win is a win, in my opinion, regardless of how it's done. But then Ty's just hasn't been able to do anything. So Ty Dillon currently sets 19th in truck series standings, according to RacingReference.com. Mm hmm. Uh, for context, uh, right around that position is Chase Purdy, Spencer Boyd, who Spencer Boyd's like missed a couple races, right? I don't think Spencer's missed a few races, but he, I mean, he's now oh, racing right, for no. his own team, but he hasn't that's been doing. So for context, then Stefan Parsons, who's only ran part time. He's only ran three mm -hmm. races this season. He's 22nd in points. Ty Dillon is two spots away from being the lowest person full time in trucks and points. 
I forget Stuart Friesen's Canadian. I see the Canadian flag on racing reference and it throws me every time. Uh, so yeah, he's had a very tough season so far, five races into 2024. Yeah. And to know his stats, I mean, Daytona, it was what? 35th Atlanta, 14th Las Vegas. It was 26th Bristol, 20th Coda, 11th. He's decent at road courses. Um, we know this just again, not what I would expect from the 25, but and again, it's another transition year. You have a new driver in play. You got to mm -hmm. build the team and see kind of what goes from there. So <sighs> Ted Dillon also has the, uh, I believe, the least amount of laps completed for any full-time driver in the truck series right now. That's insane. Stats, man, they're cool. He loves looking at the numbers, looking at the stats. I love, I love data, man. I'm, I'm a, I'm not going to say that out loud because that's an inappropriate word. I apologize. <laughs> so, I love data, I, man. I know exactly what you were going to say, and I love yep. it. I apologize. Hey, Aaron Chandler, thanks for joining too. Yeah. Oh, well, we just have a lot of people just don't like Ty in the chat and I get it. It's fine. I think Ty's a, like, he's a nice dude. Cool dude. I just think it's like ugh, when he gets the opportunities in cup, I'm like, Oh, I'm, I'm, cool. I'm sure he's a fine guy. I hope, I hope the best for him in his opportunities. I just don't see how this pushes the needle for colleague. Yeah, it, it really doesn't. It doesn't. But that's all the news I had for you all. We'll wait to preview uh, Richmond. I was about to, I was about to say Phoenix. My I was thinking about Phoenix. I don't know why Phoenix, Arizona. You know, lovely, lovely place. Anywho, we'll wait to preview this until <laughs> um, I think Dom Joseph is going to join us a little bit, and I know he wants to do his own um, preview and stats for Richmond. If not, then I will fill in and explain as best I can. But for now, I kind of want to open the floor to the comment section. If you guys have any topics you want to talk about, I know if you guys are just joining us right now, I'll let you know we did talk about North Wilkesboro, North Wilkesboro already. We did talk about Sammy Smith getting some truck opportunities, MBM um, doing the 600 in North Wilkesboro with Timmy Hill, and then Ty Dillon getting a ride. So um, all across the board, YouTube, Facebook, TikTok, Twitch, if you guys have any comments, let me know. But is there Tell anything Taylor where she should about? go in Charlotte? Huh? Tell Taylor where she should go in Charlotte. Yeah, where should I go <laughs> in, in Charlotte? I've already gone to like some pretty good food places. I know I need to go to Lancaster's. That's a thing. Um, Lancaster. What is that? It's so it's this, um, I guess this famous motorsports themed barbecue restaurant that people like are head mm -hmm. over heels over. Haven't gone yet. I will not lie to you all. I am not a big barbecue fan. It has to be like, it's just like I can be, so good. but it depends. It depends. Tisk tisk. First thing, someone asked, "Is Alex Bowman back?" No. <laughs> okay. Well, no. If he does well this weekend, then I will probably say yes because he's had back-to-back -to -back top fives, and they are at different style tracks. He's really good at road courses. Granted, at Circuit of the Americas, he's always been in the top ten every time we've gone there. So potentially. Um, somebody asked, you know, is Toyota, like, do we think Toyota is the strongest manufacturer right now? I think that they have the speed. It's just closing out results. Uh, I, I think that Chevrolet is still the strongest. I think Toyota has oh, now taken, taken a dominant, um, uh, lead Chevrolet has, uh, and then Toyota yeah. has taken a dominant Sega and then Ford, I feel like is getting, uh, lost in the fog so to speak for I, for me the one thing i want to ask this weekend and whenever i go into a race weekend i never want to ask about like a previous race because that's just redundant but a lot of it too is like hey how why do you feel you were so off what about last year's you know body for you all versus the dark horse do you mm -hmm. feel is impacting your ability to find speed you know mm -hmm. I, i'm curious to see what their thought process is as to why their performance at the road course, not able to qualify in the top 10, only one Ford driver in the top 10. And that was Chris Buescher. But I mean, Chris Buescher is also great at road courses. So kind of expected, but why is this, you know, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. I, if I'm Ford, I'm not hitting the panic button just no, yet. Not this yet. Season. If we get to like, I, I would say at Talladega and Talladega will be a bit, um, by bi not biased per se, but it'll, it's not a, it's one of those in the data pool. You may have to throw out, uh, oh, yeah. If we get to Talladega, Kansas area, and they're still struggling, it's like, okay, we need to figure out what the actual heck is going on with this team and this product because it's not going well. So, no. And I will say, too, I think the Ford that is, I mean, clearly by the point standings, too, the Ford that's carrying everybody's 
like weight right now is Ryan Blaney. He's third in points, driver points overall. Yeah. So the way a champion or a former champion or, or what is it? Reigning. Thank you. I was about to say recurring. I'm like, that's not what the I mean. other word that begins with R. <laughs> it was like, wait, it's the way a reigning champion should go into the next season. So let me see. I don't know why I was randomly thinking once someone like Martin Truex Jr. and Denny Hamlin goes on, who is that next? Oh, that's a good question. Um, and Ben, this is one for you to ponder since you love Martin Truex Jr. so much, <laughs> which is, I guess, kind of painful at the same time. But if, if, Martin Truex Jr. retires, and when he does, not if it's a win for anybody, any athlete. Who do you feel is next in line in the Toyota camp to take over? Uh, the Toyota pipeline is very fluid now. Mm -hmm. uh, like, it is very ever-changing. Like, two, like, last year, we didn't have Chandler Smith and Sheldon Creed to be in the pipeline, and now they're viable options to take over. Uh, the 19 car or the 11 car, depending upon what happens. Um, I would, I, Corey Heim seems pretty set on taking his time uh, and dominating everything that he humanly can. Yeah, That's he'll be killer. Uh, but he seems very much set on, I'm going to work my way up. And, and again, he's a guy that he may bail on the Toyota pipeline. Sammy Smith bailed on the Toyota pipeline and went yeah. to Chevrolet. Um, granted, he took a different route. He didn't run trucks until this year now. But it's kind of an oh, I could honestly, depending upon how it goes, I could see Chandler Smith taking over one of those rides. Honestly, that's not a bad thought. Because I think I think Chandler Smith's going to want to move up, and he's wanting to. I mean, again, it's where some tough with colleague. Yeah, yeah, and his time with colleague, it didn't go as well as I think he had hoped. I know he got a win, right? He won at Richmond. In our yeah. in on Arca in Xfinity, <laughs> uh, he won the Xfinity Rich Race last year in the spring, and then he ran some Cup starts with Cog, but that's all that ever really happened. He made he made the playoffs, but didn't do too hot, and then he announced he was signing with Gibbs. Yeah, so um, I could see him moving up. I don't know. Sheldon Creed's hard to read. That's kind of a rhyme that I didn't mean to have happen. Uh, I could see him maybe possibly, but I could also see him easily staying in Xfinity. I don't know what he wants to do. He, he gives, uh, I mean, don't mean this in a mean way. Sheldon Creed, if you ever see this, he gives off the vibes of like Xfinity or truck lifer, like an all guy or a Matt Crafton oh, in some regard. So, yeah. I and maybe that. I could be wrong. He maybe has the talent to win eight championships and be what Robbie Gordon wanted to be as a Southern California kid or whatever. Um, but I, I don't know what his plan is. I could easily see, I mean, Corey, I'm definitely like the, the hot prospect right now in the Toyota pipeline that has, a good chance of coming up fast, but I think Chandler Smith's probably in the forefront to replace someone in one of the cup series cars first. I agree. hundred percent. No, I will say it's, it's not a vibe thing, but it is a vibe thing. I, I totally agree with you that Chandler Smith seems like he would be a Xfinity lifer. Maybe he'll, he'll try cup and then it'll be like, nah, Xfinity full time. You mean Sheldon Creed? That's right. That's what I meant. Sheldon Creed. Thanks. I, was like, I knew what you meant. Second. Hold up. Um, Hold up. Let's see. We'll answer this question too before we bring Dom in here. Um, actually, no, we'll, I'll say the question, then we'll bring Dom in. Um, blown away by the Marco Andretti situation with the truck. Like the whole rear just came out. Dude, what, what uh, was your I made the joke of let's do deadlifts after, like, because it just looks like a freaking weight out there. I was like, let's just do deadlifts now. Yeah. So let's see. Hi. Hello. Dom! Sorry, I'm late. You're good. Dom Joseph joining us now. What did you what did you think about the Marco Andretti incident? <laughs> um, that was a new one. <laughs> for, for a wreck that wasn't a wreck is really the it's like it just happened. It's like, oh, which was literally Jamie Little's reaction to it. Yeah, when just, they it. Oh, <laughs> there is no right reaction to it. <laughs> um, Same. Yeah, just bizarre, super bizarre. Yeah, I it's just it's one of those freak accidents. It's like it's not something you expect to happen at all. That's nothing. I don't think any of us have ever seen happen. Even the broadcast people have been in the sport for like, what, 20 plus years of like, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, leave it to leave it to the truck series. But I'm trying yeah. to think like I we've seen drive shafts fly out and break and shatter, but never. I don't think I'm trying. To, I feel the like we've seen, ever seen an axle like detached from a car is when Newman flipped in the 2003 Daytona 500. Yeah, that's, oh, that's the only it. thing because we've seen like axle like this like 
I'm gonna get in the car and talk here. I apologize. Like I like you, I remember this in the COT era specifically. Like we've seen like the center of caps to get knocked off and axles slide out of the the rear end housing. Like I remember, yes. I want to say it was Jamie McMurray it's, in Vegas. It's it's years. Yeah, yeah, that, I, like that it's memory normal. vividly is in my head for some reason. <laughs> but like I've never seen like the entire like rear end housing, including the gear, come out completely. Yeah, I'm I'm trying to figure out like if there was actually like. If someone actually came out and said what exactly happened, but I with something like this, it's like it's just a freak accident with how oh, things went oh, down. Um, keep uh, keep talking and feeling. I might have an answer to this because um, he lost the rear end housing. Turn eleven. What it could have been. I mean, when you think about a road course like that, just so much back and forth that yeah, side to side could easily loosen something up, especially if if it wasn't tight enough, but it takes one right. little thing to set all of it off. Yeah. So, um, shout out Nix. Uh, Nix is a friend of mine. They used to work in the arc garage. They now work in, I think us AF racing. I can't remember exactly. I apologize. They did a quick diagram. I probably can't pull this up for legal reasons and I don't want to get in trouble, but they did a great diagram essentially saying like the way the uh, trailing truck arms are made, there's a weld point in them that they believe that's where it failed was the weld point itself. It oh. failed, which makes sense uh, in that regard. Cause you're putting a lot of abuse on that rear suspension. So. Oh yeah. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. But no, that was, that was a wild moment. Let's it's cool move on to preview richmond though i know we have some xfinity stuff to talk about so we'll talk about that first before we get into dom's projected top 10 for the cup series but for xfinity um i think the big story for me this weekend is um bubba pollard making his xfinity series debut um with junior motorsports that's really exciting for me like that's cool uh so I, I don't know if you guys have any thoughts on that i know we talked about this when the news initially came out but now that the weekend's basically here do we have expectations set in do we have just general thoughts on it or is it one of those things where we just kind of want to see what happens because I, I think i'm in that boat quite honestly dom the floor is yours okay i was, I was oh. you look like you're gonna go first so i was letting you go <laughs> you know, I mean, you want to see him do well for sure um yeah. you know you never want to see someone make their debut and do awful um so now i, I want to see him not necessarily be competitive but just keep the car clean and stay relevant in the race. Mm -hmm. I'm not expecting him to go out there and dominate and win. Not even expecting him to win. I uh, yeah. just want to see that 88 car, which looks beautiful, by the way, with that ream paint oh, yeah. scheme. Um, just want to see the 88 car do what a junior motorsports car should do, uh, be in the top 15, um, and just be in the conversation. Yeah. I think, I mean, couldn't have said it better myself. I mean, it's just be relevant is my whole thing. I'm trying to pull up the paint scheme too, because I did really like it. Hold on. Ben, did you have the same there. thoughts? Um, yeah, I kind of the same. Uh, I, w I want him to have fun more than anything. Uh, I, I yeah. know that's a very like cheesy thing to say, no, but like, no, that, but I'm real, right with you. Like, yeah, this is a fun track for Xfinity. In my opinion, it's a very mm -hmm. much a tire wear track and I enjoy that. Uh, I know he just did his debut uh, in Arc East as well because he was doing the double header at a uh, at uh, Five Flags this past weekend with the ASA Stars Tour, and he just uh, seems to be wanting to have fun with this right now. He's coming off of a tough race in ASA, but I just want to have fun, have a good time with it. Don't junk it and bring it back and be happy yeah. with it. That's all I want. So bring it back in one piece. Here, I got the I got the image here. Let's share it. There we go. Something like that. Yeah, it's a good-looking car. Yeah, it it's looks good. Really, I'm, I might have to pre-order the diecast. I probably won't though, because I don't have money. That's always the problem. <laughs> That's so always weird. the problem. It stinks. So, no, but it looks good. It looks great. Good car. So there's that. Um, also, other news for Xfinity this weekend: there were some roster changes. Um, Ryan Vargas is going to be in at Jordan Anderson Racing in the number thirty-two. Um, mm. and yeah, I think that was that was it. Um, oh, um, Logan um, Bearden, um, number 14 for SS Greenlight is another note that I have. Yeah. Yes, he's hopping in. Yeah. So pretty cool stuff. But no, Xfinity, I think, will be um, one to watch this weekend just because there are a few new names and there are a few names that are doing some one-offs. But obviously, Bubba, we got to watch for him. Like, I'm I'm so stoked about that 
So, and I will say Brian in the chat here does have a point. Richmond is one of the most boring tracks. Hope they have brought a truckload of resin on the track. Um, yeah, Richmond typically is not my favorite track, but I've never been there to see the racing in person. So I'm hoping it changes my mind, but there's no hate towards Richmond Raceway. It's just, I don't find it the most entertaining all the time. And that's okay. That's my thoughts on it, but I'm very excited. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> anyway, you, Dom, you ready? Yeah, let's do it. All right. Here we go. Well, um, again, this is all stats based on the spring race alone, not all Richmond starts. So all these guys, all their stats are compared based on their spring starts at Richmond Raceway. Uh, so we can go ahead and get into it. All right, let's dive in. So looking at this top 10, first thing you'll notice right out of the gate is all four Hendrick cars are once again represented in this top 10. Uh, William Byron looks really good. His his numbers have gotten a lot better from where they were when he first started at Richmond. And based on the numbers, it looks like he's on his way to either another top five or perhaps his first win at Richmond Raceway. Uh, he's got the fifth best stats on our list. Kyle Larson's the defending winner of this race, uh, driving that number five car. Um, his most <laughs> infamous moment at Richmond was in his first start there in the cup series in 2014 started on pole position taylor i don't know if you've seen this highlight uh started on pole position for this race in 2014 and didn't even make it to turn two got wrecked mm -hmm. by clint boyer on the oh! very first lap going yep. into turn one yeah uh, just a mis misjudgment on both sides and yeah but he's been able to rally. His numbers have gotten better and better and better. Uh, obviously, being with Hendrick Motorsports pays a lot of dividends. Uh, and he's the defending winner of this race. And then Alex Bowman, he's eighth on our list. He won this race in 2021. It's one of the select wins he's got. And it was in his statistically best year of his career, 2021. Um, led the final 10 laps of that race. Um, and I do want to say with Alex Bowman, we talked about this at the beginning of the show, Dom, that you weren't here for, but yeah. his stock is rising, uh, two top yeah, tens in a row. So he's had a, he's had a heck of a start to 2024. He, he's doing that team a lot of favors for the bad 2023 that they had, which a lot of it wasn't his fault because right. um, it, it just came down to reliability and stuff like that. But yeah, no, he's, He's had a heck of a year. As much as I want to knock him, I can't because the numbers don't lie. Um, Chase Elliott's there too. He's ninth. He's just a consistent racer here. You know, he yeah. he has an Xfinity Series win here back in 2015, but he hasn't gotten to victory lane in a cup car yet in the spring at Richmond. But he's a very good driver here. His numbers are very, very helpful for him. Uh, the defending champ, Ryan Blaney, another one just super consistent. So he, he's on our list based off sheer consistency. Uh, good top fives, top tens. Uh, Brad Keselowski, while he's never won the Richmond Spring Race, he has won at Richmond, and what he he's got this place down. He he dominates races. He may not win them, but he dominates them. He's got a couple mm -hmm. most laps led in the Spring Race. He's sixth on our list, matches his car number. This could be a good weekend for him to go out there and get that elusive victory. It looked like it was going to be him in the fall of last year, but it was his teammate that got the victory. Uh, Martin Truex Jr., uh, shout out, Ben. Uh, he's got really good numbers here since he made the transition to Toyota, uh, not necessarily to Gibbs, uh, starting in 2016 um, with Furniture Row Racing. The car and him have just synced at Richmond since that transition. Got the win in 2019. He's led a ton of laps and has kept himself in the dance. Go ahead, Ben. Uh, I just I remember that win because I was sitting in my driveway in college, just screaming my head off. What that was his first like, Gibbs win, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, I've got him fourth on the list here with his numbers. Joey Logano is a two-time winner of this race, 2014, which that was one of the best Richmond finishes we've seen in a while, um, and then 2017, which is kind of the controversial one because the car failed tech afterwards. But this was before oh, yeah. disqualifications. Uh, they just took a massive, massive points penalty afterwards, which in turn led to him really just not even being competitive in the playoffs. So uh, tough one for Logano in 2017, but he is a two-time winner here. He's led a ton of laps. 
Uh, this is one of Denny Hamlin's two home races, and he's got very, very good numbers at Richmond. Has a win in the fall, has not won the spring race. Well, actually, he did in 2022. My mistake. He got the win in 2022, but there were a lot of moments. I think about 2008, he led 381 of 400 laps, but did not win because of, I believe it was an engine failure going into the latter stages of that race. But yeah, it was his race to lose and he lost it with, and it was not of his doing something with the, something with the car. And then the statistical favorite is Kyle Busch because Kyle Busch won the spring race, leaving fall out of it. Kyle Busch won the spring race in 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012, and 2018. Again, this is all with Joe Gibbs racing in that 18 car. We have seen that that has changed for him in recent years, but I, I look at last year with RCR, his first start at Richmond with RCR. He started second and had a good run in that eight car. So I, I can see it happening for this team, but my my worry is I know this is the, the stats are saying Kyle Bush, but me personally. Yeah. I'm worried for him after what I saw in Phoenix and Richard yeah. Childress racing as a whole missed it at Phoenix. So if they can turn it around at Richmond. He's got a chance based on the numbers, but I would be hesitant with picking that eight car. Yeah. I'm more inclined to say Denny Hamlin would probably be the number one this weekend. I did want to ask um, because we have Brad Kozlowski up here. Another kind of question like last week, you know, where's Chris Buescher? What are his odds this weekend? Uh, so Chris Busher, let me pull it up real quick. Um, I can actually pull it up right here. Um, sorry, I should have had this up ahead of time. So here we go. Chris Busher, I've got, let's see, uh, this is last week's Toyota Owners 400. Chris Busher is 19th. Okay. So he has an average start of 17th and average finish of 24.1. And that's in the, just in the spring race. I know he won in the fall, but average finish of 24.1. His best start is seventh twice. His best finish is 15th. And he has mm -hmm. not led any laps in the spring race. But one thing he does have going for him, no DNFs. True. And also too, somebody mentioned him, Christopher Bell. That's another driver that I think is considered. I've got him 11th. 11th. Okay. So just yep. right outside that top 10. Yes. I'm um, looking for any other interesting ones that may be lower on the list. It's, I mean, Austin Sindrick 25th, but again, yeah. if, if we think about Austin, that's right about where we'd expect him to be. Uh, Bubba Wallace 23rd, Eric Jones 21st. Um, what about Ty Gibbs? Ty Gibbs. I have at 17th in one spring start started 14th finished ninth so he's got a top 10 in one start um, but i've got him 17th some of those guys with a lot more numbers uh benefited from that chase briscoe 16th not too bad for the 14 team tyler reddick i have 15th and then austin dylan 14th ross chastain 13th and ricky stenhouse jr 12th okay that's actually good and then josh berry i mean don't have a lot to pull there. Um, but I, we did see, you know, Josh Berry took second last year. Uh, and because of that, we had our best average finish of everybody with a average finish of second. But <laughs> I've got him, I mean, for a guy that's only got one start, he's 20th on the board. That's not <laughs> terrible. Yeah. It's not bad. Yeah. I definitely say, I think the team to beat this weekend, in my opinion, even just looking at this, it, it's going to be Joe Gibbs, obviously. I mean, the Toyotas are so strong at these types of tracks. I think with the new body, I don't see any issues coming forward this weekend. Um, I mean, they were really fast at Bristol, obviously Denny Hamlin getting the win. I mean, I see them having a great weekend. The only thing, uh, the only team I think that can ruffle their feathers would be Hendrick Motorsports. But again, you yeah. have the Fords like Brad Kozlowski in there. Joey Logano, I'm a little hesitant on um, based off of his season so far, but he is decent at Richmond as the stats show. So maybe this is a good weekend for that 22 team to turn it around, maybe. And it seems like, you know, it, it's so hard to tell too with Ford as a whole right now because, you know, RFK had a good finish to Phoenix, but. I mean, Ryan Blaney was fair at Phoenix, but other than that, all the Fords missed it. Yeah. And, you know, Joey started his career as not the best at Richmond. And then when we got to the Generation 6 car, he caught fire 
at Richmond. And that could very well have part to do with this. It's just he and the next gen car at Richmond with a lot more shifting involved. Actually, shifting itself is involved. It never was beforehand. Right. Uh, th that could hinder how he races Richmond. Um, I, I, uh, I would agree with you. I, I think looking at this top 10, putting the numbers aside, I would not put money on Kyle Busch or Joey Logano, but I would still say Brad Keselowski and Ryan Blaney are legitimate contenders to win based on their Phoenix performance. Absolutely. For sure. And you know, it, it seems like Blaney, regardless of the equipment is give he's given can outperform what he's given. I mean, comparing him to the other Fords, he's carrying the flag. So, um, but you look around, you've got Denny up there, Truex, Byron, Larson, Chase, Bowman. I mean, there, there's a lot of heavy hitters up there that have got the equipment right now that you've got to get by, you've got to beat. So right. um, it, it'll be it'll be interesting, but it, I, I'd be hesitant to take Joey, but he's also a two-time champion. He's proven people wrong before. So it, it, any given Sunday. Yeah. I mean, I, I think if there's any weekend for that team to turn it around, uh, Joey Logano, it, it would be this weekend. Uh, hopefully, fingers crossed. I would love to see Austin Cindric somehow in the mix. I remember last year, uh, one of the talking points that I think should have been a little louder than it actually was, was that he switched some of his setup to be more similar to Joey Logano's just to kind of get a baseline of where he should be running and um, talked about, you know, the short tracks and having, and that Joey's so good at them that hopefully it would help him out there a little bit. So um, not sure if they're still on the same I guess doing the same thing this year, but at least I would hope that from that, Cindric learned a few things to take into this weekend and hopefully do really well. Um, and with short tracks, I always like to uh, talk about too, like pit road mistakes. You know, you'd make one mistake and you go laps down at a short track. So uh, another thing key to winning this weekend is no mistakes. That's any weekend, but most especially uh, these short tracks. So I'm um, excited to see who will get the win this weekend. Um, I know. And, uh, Another thing too to think about is that we're running this at That's night, the other thing. so it's an entirely mm -hmm. different. This is an entirely different Richmond that they're going to be running. Yeah. So maybe that's all the fluids needed. That's that's the thing. I I actually uh, fun fact for everybody. I forgot this was a night race until today or yesterday. So <laughs> so it'll be it'll be really interesting. So I was like, I'm going to Richmond. I was so stoked, and I'm like, oh right, that's a it's a night race. So. Be mindful of that, everybody. Uh, but no, it should be it should be a good one. Um, really, really fun. Any closing thoughts about Richmond? Any topics that we might not have touched this show that we want to mention? Happy Easter, if that's yeah. what you do too. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, if, if you all celebrate that's... Easter, happy Easter. Spend some time yeah. with your family. It's an Easter Sunday race, um, Sunday. so enjoy that. That's all I got. Yeah, I think, yeah, I think um, this will be interesting for Richmond. Yeah. If running it at night was, was the answer all along, because yeah. uh, I agree with the fans and I agree with you, Taylor, they've got to try yeah. something new. They've got to figure something out because it's, mm -hmm. it's hurting. Um, it's just, it's hard to watch now. Um, I, I know those races back in the past were long too. Like we, we had those instances like 2014, the, the wreck in 2008 with Kyle and Dale jr. That turned the whole NASCAR world upside down. That's all Richmond. And it had its moments where it was spectacular. And then we also had moments where Brad Keselowski led 390 of 400 laps. We had moments where Kyle Busch dominated thoroughly was never contested it, it goes back and forth so hopefully when the lights go up lights turn on uh, at night we can have a uh, we can have a good show uh, sparks can fly maybe that's all we needed fingers crossed i'm really i'm really hoping this is that this is the key i mean heck we try different things at bristol to make the spring race interesting i mean might as well take a shot at richmond right now so yeah, please, please. goodness knows we've tried everything, but that's been the live stream from us here at Above the Yellow Line. Uh, for more NASCAR news, motorsports news, make sure to check out tobychristie.com, keeping you up to date through the race weekend, covering ARCA, NASCAR, anything in between, like we got you covered. And then, of course, abovetheyellowline.com 
where we have some of the merchandise, like this shirt that I'm wearing right now um, on the website. Get it. It's pretty cool. Kind of see it, kind of can't. Uh, but make sure to get it. Um, and then also just for more about us and what we do and more about the team, my lovely team here, make sure to go to aboveviolaline.com. And check us out on social media as well. All of our social media handles are on the screen for you here um, under everyone's lovely video and things like that. So make sure to check us out for up-to-date news updates throughout the weekend. So, yeah. Thanks, everyone, so much for joining this episode of Above the O-Line Live. And until next time, we'll see you and have a great race weekend. And Dom and I will see you at Richmond. We will. So catch you later.